Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Um, very early in the morning, uh, I thought I'd get a little bit uh, work done on the 360. Uh, I, <clears throat> I started to put the oil line to the rear in. I got the freeze plugs in. And then I went to install the cam. Now, here's the cam in the lathe. There's a comp cam. Uh, the camshafts are a real problem these days. Uh, they, don't, uh, they don't fit right. Uh, they don't last a long time. Uh, we've been putting camshafts in vehicles for well over a hundred years and they're slowly deteriorating. So I got this comp cam. I go to put it in the engine. Uh, brand new cam bearings in there. It doesn't fit. Uh, couldn't, couldn't get half the cam in. The bearings are too tight. Uh, <clears throat> so I took it out and uh, I'm polishing it in lathe. And, and we'll get into that in a little bit. I'll show you what's going on with that. And uh, little by little, I'm custom fitting each bearing, each journal to its bearing. Uh, it's a real, real slow process. It's a super pain in the ass. Uh, but this is you got to do. This is what you got to do if you want to get a camshaft in these days. Uh, now I decided to call comp cams, and naturally, uh, you call these guys, uh, and you get put on hold. And they keep coming on the phone saying, uh, heavy call volume, you know, it's going to be a little bit. So I put the phone down and I went to work. Uh, two hours later, I'm still getting the same message, heavy call volume. You know, we'll, we'll answer you in the order it comes in. Uh, you can't even call these guys and tell them what's going on with their cams. I measured every journal. Uh, it's oversized. Uh, I, I tested it for a, a bend. Uh, it's not bent or anything, that's not a problem, uh, but the journals are oversized. And, and I know I'm not the, the only guy out there that's having trouble with camshafts. It's not just comp cams, it's a lot of cam manufacturers. Uh, there's a real problem there today. So, uh, like I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to polish this, I'll show you how I do that. Uh, there's different ways of getting cams to fit, and we're going to talk about some of the good ways and some of the bad ways. But I'm going to polish these journals. I've got the, uh, the crank polisher out. I've got a crankshaft in the crank machine, so I have this in the lathe, and uh, I don't want to disturb the, the crankshaft machine right now. And we're going to polish this, we're going to fit it, and, uh, and like I say, this is super tight in there, and uh, it, it's just a real problem. So anybody else having problems out there, uh, I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it, and, uh, and what you need to get a, a long-lasting camshaft in your engine these days. So stick with me, uh, there's a little bit more 360 stuff happening in this video. Hang in there and uh, we'll go over a few more things. Okay guys, here's a camshaft after my first round of uh, polishing. Now I have the cam fully in here I didn't get any footage, but the cam wouldn't fit in all the way the first time. Now, no matter how much you grab and try and turn, that guy is still pretty snug. Uh, <clears throat> I've got a little stump on here with a nut. Uh, it takes quite a bit of pressure with the wrench to get that guy to turn. So, we're still not where we need to be. Um, this is a real problem uh, with camshafts these days. Uh, but we're going to pull it out again. I think you can see it in there. Uh, it's just tight on every single bearing there. So I'm going to pull it out again. We're going to go back and we're going to polish it. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm about uh, five to six tenths off of the bearing surfaces. And like I say, now it goes all the way in, but it's still very, very tight. So. That, that, that won't be able to, uh, to run that engine very long. So let's take it back, polish it again, and uh, see where we get the next time.
Okay guys, I've had this cam in and out probably about seven times. Uh, I didn't want to take too much at one time. Uh, I changed belts. I was using my Ruby Red 400 grit belt on the crank polisher. And look at that guy. Hope you can see that. That's turning beautifully. Okay, I was using that Ruby Red 400 grit and I went through about three belts. Uh, I was not putting any polishing compound on the belt. I was doing straight 400 grit. Uh, and then the final one I polished. So uh, the journals are, are just as nice as they were uh, from the factory. My hands are getting all slippery, but let me show you. Okay, that just glides in there. That's what you need. Now, uh, I put my final dimensions on a sheet of paper. I'll put a picture in the in the video you can pause it if you want to see the numbers I came up with now that's how your cam needs to fit if it's tighter than that you're gonna have trouble it's not gonna last there's one more thing I like to do here I'll get the camera set up and I'll show you uh, I just like to uh, spin the cam a little bit make sure we're not gonna run into any trouble so let's get set up for that Okay guys, when I fit a cam that gives me trouble, when I finally get it fit good, I like to take a uh, slow turn and air drill on there and I'm going to spin the cam there. Now I'm going to, uh, I got some cam lube on there, but I'm going to throw a little bit of oil down to each cam bearing. Now we're just going to see how this cam is going to operate. I'm going to turn this drill on, we're going to spin that cam, we're going to see if there's any, uh, any trouble with anything. Got to turn the air on. Hang in there with me, guys. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, it's just it's something simple, but uh, I, li I like to give it a few revolutions. Uh, I'm not trying to oversize the bearings. I'm not trying to break into bearings. Uh, some guys will tell you just uh, you run a cam in there and, and run it on the drill and it'll size your bearings. Don't do that. Fit the cam to the bearings. And I just run it, you know, uh, just a few times, see if anything's going to give me trouble, see if there's any catching, see if there's any snags or anything like that. Uh, it, it's, it's spinning beautifully. I'm happy with it. Uh, it was a real bear to get this fit in there. But if you don't do that, uh, you're going to be in your engine again in no time. So fit your cam properly. It shouldn't be a problem these days, but it is. And uh, we just have to learn to deal with it. Okay, here's my original cam. And, uh, and this was starting to fail. I've got some real, real bad areas on the lobes and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of remedies, or a lot of guys that think there's good remedies for fitting too tight a camshaft. Now there's guys out there that will tell you, take a die grinder, cut a slot in each of your bearings, your, your journals here that write, that write on the bearings, cut a slot in there, put your old cam in there, and, and spin it. And it will size your bearings for you. Um, you know, the Babbitt material on a bearing is so thin and the bearing is such a tender piece in an engine uh, if you just if you just cut that and go in there and, and try and size your bearing uh, you're gonna get in trouble it's not gonna be a long-lasting cam don't believe the people that tell you to do that uh, I mean you can if you want I don't I don't really care what you do but uh, I'm just trying to show you the right way to do it um, <clears throat> there's other people that are like oh just take a bearing scraper and get in there and, and carve your bearings up uh, no no no, that's just not good. You're not going to have a long, a long-lasting engine. Um, the only way I found to do it is to size each journal to the bearing with the proper amount of oil clearance. Proper amount of oil clearance on these guys is one to three thousandths. Uh, three is a little excessive. I like to be lower on the, the one, one and a half, something like that. Uh, the only way you're going to get there is to polish these journals. Uh, that's the best way to do it 
and and I already know guys are getting ramped up to tell me oh you just you polished right through the hardening of the journal it's gonna fail well if your journal only goes in if your journal hardness only goes in you know half to maybe seven tenths well then you got a bad cam to begin with the hardness is gonna go in here plenty deep you're not gonna take any hard the hardness out by polishing you know five tenths seven tenths or even full thousands you're not gonna run into trouble uh, there's a lot of guys telling you that uh, don't believe it this is this is this is a real problem with camshafts now so uh, take this video for what it's worth and but but do what you want and uh, you see how to fit a cam you see what it should spin like you should be able to turn it with your hand without any trouble and if you can't polish the journals Okay hey guys, we're set up in the seat and guide machine. Got the air hooked up to the air float table. And I just did the first one. So we're machining the outside of this to take a positive seal. Cuts the outside, puts a chamfer on the top. And it has a guide, a pin to go in your guide. And um, we'll have to move our hold downs uh, to get at the end ones and stuff, but uh, you could do this by hand with a drill. Uh, make sure you have a slow turn and drill, and uh, you really got to have a good feel with a hand drill. You can do it with a hand drill, I don't recommend it, but uh, it can be done if you're very careful. And um, we'll just get set up on one, and um, I got this on slow speed, and we'll just machine that down. And uh, this is a very good upgrade instead of those big umbrella seals that go on there. Uh, positive seal is a is a good way to go. Okay guys, uh, I covered a few things on that 360. Uh, if anybody has any questions on anything, just uh, put a comment below. Um, the oil line is a good upgrade for a 360. Uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit about that. A lot of guys think it's not necessary. Uh, bearings were scuffed uh, in this engine. So I know it wasn't getting oil back there as good as it should have. It's a good upgrade if you want to do it. Don't worry about what all the naysayers say. Just just do it. Um, <clears throat> camshaft, unfortunately, was a problem. Uh, other guys have run into this problem as well. Uh, comp cams does not want to do a thing about it. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is there. Uh, you talk to other cam companies and nobody has them in stock. Guys are having trouble getting um, unground uh, blanks. All the blanks are coming from overseas now. Uh, it's going to be a real problem. So just know that you might not be able to, you know, one day you're going to just take your old cam out, put a new cam and lifters in, and be on your way. Uh, that might not be the case. Uh, there's still a lot of good stuff out there, but um, you just got to be careful what you buy these days. Uh, there's a lot of problems with a lot of things. A lot of companies are selling to... Uh, big big companies hedge fund guys stuff like that to decide they want to get into the automotive business they want to start buying automotive companies and things like that we're headed on a, a downhill slope here as you can see uh, engine building is getting tougher all the time uh, 360 is almost done got a few more things to do with it uh, I did put the positive valve seals in there. That's another good thing for a 360, a 304, 360, 401. It could really benefit from the positive valve seals. Um, 
they, they could burn some oil there. Uh, my valves were oil soaked and carbon built up and uh, for a 90,000 mile motor the valves were in a little bit tougher shape than I thought they should be but we're putting all new valves, springs, stuff like that in there. I'm uh, back on the scrambler again. I've got all the parts out of the back building so I'm going to start putting that rear floor in. The front floor is fully welded in. I'm going to start putting the back uh, sections in. That's coming next on the scrambler and I have a mountain of motors to get through, L heads, F heads, things like that. So we're going to end this one here today. I um, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you can, hit the like button, share the video, uh, comment below, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Appreciate you watching. Thanks again.